Dreams don't come true overnight. Sometimes after 19 years and traveling the world, you're just getting close. But ah, close never tasted so good. I'm thrilled to finally meet you. I've heard tons about you, so this is an exceptional opportunity for us. But I want to try to get people to recognize and understand there's no such thing as an overnight success. You've been doing this for quite a while. So walk us through the evolution of the idea and where we are and, and your history in, in all of it. Oh my God, you got a few hours. <laughs> um, I went back to school, got my second degree, and then got asked to teach by uh, UNLV um, in Switzerland of all places. Hmm. I'm not gonna complain. It was great, but it was visiting my friend in saint foix which is in Bordeaux, and I was drinking in uh, saint anne lyon and just fell in love with the wines, fell in love with the concept a million years ago, it seems. And then I came back, uh, worked my ass off, and 2000, no, excuse me, gosh, it was 1997, I went back to actually from being an assistant winemaker to uh, just a cellar rat. And uh, I started with a barrel and a keg for Page Wine Cellars. And so it was a right bank Bordeaux style blend, uh, which we still do. Um, hmm. It just sold out literally this weekend. Wow. And so was it the French influence where you sitting in Bordeaux with a buddy and you thought, mm -hmm, by myself, and I want to get away from my students and people, <laughs> uh, which didn't happen. But I mean, it was, it was a time, it was, it was early summer, so it wasn't as crowded. How old were you? I was, no, I was 30. 30. But even as a 30 year old to sit there and say, wow, there is something going on with this food, with this wine that I was unaware of previously. This is interesting. Once you know some techniques, once you know some things, it's like, you know, take your average life to this level, but don't brag about it, just live that life. Right. Um, yeah, now you know how to make a great chicken. Cool, you should have known in the first place. Um, the United States is you know, definitely catching up and, and excelling and it's great. And, and it sounds like that could almost be a method of your winemaking philosophy, your passion, is to start with a great product, surround yourself with- Don't F it up. Don't F it up. So walk me through, you're on your 19th vintage, so you've had, I'm sure, some trials and tribulations, and, and now what are you aspiring towards and after, and, and what's been rewarding about it all? Well, we've had a lot of trials. I um, mean, it's hard starting with nothing. I like to be hands-on. Um, I appreciate my brother more than anything. He's helped me through some insane times when everything's hitting the fan. Uh, when we had the earthquake, um, talk about tribulation, I mean, that was, but that was insane. Some great, great, great moments, and we're getting, we're moving towards some even better great moments. And the portfolio's grown. So the portfolio has grown, but it's shrank. We used to have a whole bunch of different things. We still have, in a sense, a whole bunch of other things, but um, a lot of the things are just um, shoehorned into Wine Club, and that's it. So when someone calls and sets an appointment and sits down and mm -hmm. tastes with you, if we have it, we'll pour it. If we don't, guess what? <laughs> Sorry. So at the end of the day, when you have such a, a diverse background in, in the culinary side of things, you've mm -hmm. had some great experiences traveling internationally, you've mm -hmm. been exposed to such wonderful mentors, both domestically and internationally, and how do you wrap all that up and generate the energies into your vision of wine and what do you want that vision, what is that vision? Um, a lot of the philosophy is, is, is just, just trying to pick at a certain level. I, I believe in certain things when it comes to winemaking. Um, there's a lot of BS in this valley. There's a lot of BS in the wine industry. There's a lot of things that people don't listen. Um, and I think it's just, you know, not to get zen or anything like that, but you need to listen to what Mother Nature is giving you. Mm -hmm. You need to listen to what that varietal needs. Um, be aware, sensitive, any of those things you want to say. The idea was to be a little rock and roll, a little bit edgy. Well, you've got 18 years of very, very impressive wine growth. <laughs> Should we taste some of those decisions? Sure. Excellent. Sure. Just a great tasting experience with Brian Page in downtown Napa. Very cool urban location, really will surprise you, and the wines flat out over deliver. Thank you so much for all your support.